the Phantom Pro pedals may appear familiar to you, and if they do, it's because they are essentially a version of the SimJack Ultimate pedals, but sold by Ghost Sim Racing in the US. To clarify, Ghost Sim Racing are their own entity, the relationship being SimJack manufacture these pedals for Ghost Sim Racing. The Phantom Pros do share the same features of the SimJack Ultimate pedals, but stamped with the Ghost Sim Racing brand. In addition, Phantom Pro pedals run minor mods, performed by Ghost Sim Racing to give them some unique features, and Ghost Sim Racing QA the pedals before shipping them out to customers. Since this is a US-based business, the pedals are sold and shipped from the US, and that includes customer support. Hopefully that answers some questions you may have. Now let's move on and answer some other questions as we take a closer look at these Phantom Pro pedals. On my table we have the three pedals, a pedal deck, plus the essential accessories. The pedals are pieced together from 3mm sheet stainless steel. The sections are lined and held together precisely using joints, stud connectors and bolts. By removing these bolts, the pedal angle is adjustable. Once you've set the desired offset, screw the bolts back in. The pedal stop can be moved to alter the pedal travel. The throttle has two springs, a coil spring and a gas damper. The spring preload tension can be adjusted by rotating the collar. Setting the rod in a high or low position also alters the effect of the spring tension. The pedals use sturdy bearings on the pivot points. Ghost Sim Racing have added washers that the SimJack pedals don't, and these prevent the side of the bearings from touching the frame. This reduces friction and gives the pedals a smoother motion. The rectangle bar is a load cell. When the pedal is pressed, a small spring is compressed against the load cell, registering the input. The clutch pedal mirrors the same frame style and load cell of the throttle, the pedal face is different, and to give the pedal a three stage clutch effect, the back of the pedal has a raised spring. We also get another Ghost Sim Racing modification. The spring rod is separated and pushed off the pedal arm. Repositioning the rod in this way increases the intensity of the clutch effect feedback. The brake pedal is a more chunky design, carrying a 200kg load cell, gas damper, a fixed set of stacked elastomers, and topped off with a short metal preload spring. The brake includes three sets of elastomers. The yellows are 60 sure, the greens are 80, and finally 90 for the blue set. The higher the number, the firmer they are. Swapping them out is performed by loosening the collar and releasing the plate to access the rod. You have the option to either change out all of one colour for another or mixing them up. Same as the pedals, the pedal deck is a rebrand version from SimJack, 3mm stainless steel with a raised heel plate. Nothing too fancy, but enough to get the pedals mounted. I've bolted the pedal deck to aluminium profile rails. This is for the purpose of mounting to my sim rig. I'm not saying this will be necessary for anybody else, just giving some context to what you're seeing.
Ghosts in Racing have shipped their pedals with a USB digital isolator as a safeguard to eliminate EMI noise that can affect the signal from the pedals if you encounter that issue. For most people, it's probably not needed, but you'll find out when you try the pedals and it is dependent on other hardware that's plugged into your PC. So if you need it, it's there. If you don't, don't bother installing it. It wasn't long ago since I covered the SimJack Ultimate pedals and now experiencing the Phantom Pro pedals is largely deja vu. In summary, the differences being the branding, different pedal face plates, washers alongside the bearings, the additional bracket support on the clutch, and lastly, the USB isolator. Essentially the same excellent performance of the SimJack pedals with some refinements. Now the changes Ghost Sim Racing have made are noticeable, though in fairness nothing that alters them in ways that make them far superior than before. The SimJack pedals do have a slight friction you can feel as feedback from the pedal, where the Phantom Pro pedal movement is smoother using the washer mod supporting the bearings. It's not technically an issue on the SimJack pedals, they don't stick or anything that slows down the motion, but for sure it does give the Ghost Sim Racing pedals a bit more refinement and that's a positive. The clutch mod does successfully increase the clutch effect feedback, previously a subtle effect, but now it comes through with sharper intensity, and I would say it is an improvement. By the way, Ghost Sim Racing do sell the brackets as a standalone mod as well, so you can upgrade your existing SimJack pedals with this modification too. I did not need to run the USB isolator on the cable, the controller box is already well shielded, but I do appreciate that they've included this extra measure of protection to fall back on. There you have it, that covers what these Phantom Pro pedals offer as improvements over the original SimJack Ultimate pedals. So all the same goodness that impressed me when I reviewed the SimJack Ultimate pedals, but now with a sprinkling of small upgrades. These are things that are nice to have rather than anything essential, but at least Ghost Sim Racing have put their own personal mark on these pedals with real improvements and not just slapping on a different badge. Usually when I review pedals, at this point I would go through each pedal and describe how they feel and perform in great detail. I'm not going to do that here, I've already gone through that painstaking process with the SimJack pedals. So I would invite you to watch that review, as simply put, the results are the same. In brief, a physically solid and reliable set of pedals. There's plenty of adjustments, so you can dial in each pedal exactly how you want them to feel. The pedals feel great under my feet and I love the brake. You have those different sets of elastomers enabling you to zero in the resistance and pedal travel. Personally, I'm sticking with the 60 Shaw yellow elastomers. Those were the right ones for me and the short metal spring is the perfect preload spring. I expect you notice the pedal deck is showing some flex when I tread on the brake. I'm only realizing this flex when reviewing the footage afterwards. I don't feel this, so I can give it a pass. It kind of looks worse on camera than in reality. So what I'm saying is the flex is not as big a deal as it may appear. I could add some support underneath and that would help. And I probably would if I plan to use these pedals long term. And you do need to remember this is a budget friendly pedal set. You can't demand perfection in all areas. As for the price, the Phantom Pro pedals do cost more than the SimJack Ultimate pedals. That's to be expected. The good news is the difference is not excessive. These pedals are still good value and worth the asking price. However, there is one caveat we need to add to this. Since these are sold from North America, I would advise you that if you live outside of the US and buying from overseas, you will end up paying additional import duties, in which case I would recommend you buy the SimJack Ultimate pedals instead. For context, I did need to pay £70 to cover the customs and VAT charges before they were delivered to me in the UK. Of course, duties are different for other countries, so buyer beware. So unless you don't care and don't mind paying the excess, well, that one's on you. If you are buying within the US, then that doesn't matter since you don't need to worry about any of those sort of things. In which case, yes, I can recommend these Phantom Pro pedals. They are excellent. You will not be disappointed.